Hi, my name is Dr. James Church. I'm an associate professor in the Computer Science and Information Technology Department at Austin P. State University. I do a lot of online teaching and my primary workflow is to use Camtasia in order to do all of my online lectures. So what I thought I could do in this video is to show you all of my recording tips that I believe improve the quality of my lectures and allow me to create videos quickly. Uh, Tip number one, and that is get a good microphone. I'm using a blue snowball microphone on an arm that allows it to keep it off of my desk and still in front of my face. Uh, I've got a pop filter uh, over that microphone. It really improves the quality of the sound and it allows people to hear me much better. Uh, also get a good camera so that people can see your mouth uh, that will improve, you know, just the natural conveyance of the information and it allows people to uh, see the emotion on your face. And that, that helps with the connection. Next, we, uh, I always reduce the screen resolution down to 20, uh, 1024 by 768. I'm going to show you how I do that. Uh, look at my messy desktop. Let's go to, uh, right click on your desktop, go to display settings and you can see the resolution right here. Now you can see how my screen resolution gets pretty high, uh, 1920 by 1080, and I am using the second to lowest setting. I do that for a primary reason, and that is to keep my overall video files small uh, whenever the learner is watching them. Not everyone has great internet connections, and so if you have small videos, uh, that can that can reach the learner easier. All right. Next tip: keep your video short, ten minutes. Studies have shown that uh, learners have an attention span uh, that is limited. Please don't waste people's time with things that are unrelated to the video, uh, or keep that to an absolute minimum, and focus on short videos that are right on topic. Back up your videos immediately. I always use Dropbox and I always save directly to my online Dropbox account. That way, after I'm done recording, the, uh, the video is always saved to the cloud. And if anything were to happen to my computer, I would still have all of my videos saved. Set your screen recorder to 30 frames per second. Uh, this is fast enough to be fluid, but not slow, so slow that it produces enormous files. Uh, let me show you how to do that. So I'm using Camtasia right now in order to record this. And you have to record a little bit of video just for this option to appear. So you can see I've got 10 minutes of, not 10 minutes, 10 seconds of pre-recorded video. If I go to share and I go to custom production, I've got a few presets. I've got one for if I want to record GIFs and I've got one if I want to record to D2L. Let's do a new custom production and I'm just going to step through the settings here. I always record to an MP4. I don't bother with uh, controllers. I set the size to be whatever my video screen production size is. I set the frame rate to 30 frames per second. That's a really good frame rate. That way, if any motion is happening on your monitor, it will translate well to the video. I keep the uh, bar between uh, at 50% between uh, file size and quality. I set a keyframe every five seconds. I think most of this is by default. I do encode audio in all of my videos, and I keep the bitrate to 128 kbps. That is good for spoken word. It's not good for music. It, it was good for music 20 years ago, uh, but nowadays people like their music at a much higher audio uh, bit rate. Uh, but 128, that's really good. So if you're not playing music, I think that's okay. Oh, I went too far. Uh, this is where you can set things like watermarks and any copyright information on your videos. I just skipped this. And then here's where you can save your project and begin the uh, encoding process. Let me go back to my tips. Uh, use a PowerPoint slide or an intro video to give your video a title. Well, I'm going to do that now. And what I do is I 
in my library, I have a sliding background and I'm going to drag that over to my timeline. And what this does is it adds this little menu item over here to the right side of my screen. Uh, by default, it says TechSmith Camtasia, but I'm going to call this using Camtasia for online teaching. And then the subtitle will be James Church. And now whenever I play this video. Hi, my name is Dr. James Church, and these are my tips for recording videos for online learning. Now, you can see here that the sliding background, by the way, I downloaded this sliding background off the Camtasia website. Uh, you can click this button, download more assets. I liked this one the best, and so I use it. it you have to play with it a little bit. And so I'm going to play this a little bit more. Hi, my name is Dr. James Church. You can see here how the words get cut off in the preview window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink that down. You can dynamically size it in the preview. And that's what I'm going to do. And as long as this new sliding background is stuffed all the way to the beginning of your timeline, it will appear at the beginning and to, to have a nice intro video to your uh, to your lecture uh, is nice so what I'll I typically make the first line to be my uh, title of the lecture and then the second line be uh, whatever lecture number that I'm on and it's really easy to add those and uh, drop them in uh, whenever you're finishing up the recording let's go back to my tips I'm almost done so my last tip is to use a phone or a second screen. And so what I like to do is I like to type my notes using Dropbox paper. I'm a big fan of Dropbox. And this is titled Recording Tips. And on my phone, you can see the recording tips. And if I were to type something here, I'm going to type in Recording Tips 1. That's automatically going to update. In fact, you can see it right there in the video uh, on my screen. So that, so what I like to do is I like to type the notes here on my screen and then uh, they'll automatically update on my phone. And what I'll do is I'll just prop my phone next to my camera and then read directly off my phone while I'm doing my online lectures. So those are all of the tips that I like to use whenever I'm doing my uh, recordings. So I'm gonna polish this up and upload it, upload it to YouTube and I'm gonna do everything that you saw me do in this video. So, thank you. Now, we're gonna stop the video.